Hey, what's up guys? My name's Keenan. And I'm Caleb. And welcome to the official Threefold HQ studio tour. So this is the building that we have been working on for a couple of years now. As you can tell behind me, that is the new branding for the building itself, which is called the Threefold Factory. So Threefold still exists, uh, but we've kind of sub-branded the building itself to kind of identify it and have a little bit of uniqueness there. This building is a uh, 60 by 120 big uh, warehouse Quonset style building. Uh, it's about 10,000 square feet now that everything is done and the uh, mezzanine is uh, is finished up here and uh, is kind of the next iteration of threefold. The front third of this building is the office where we have a couple conference rooms, some edit bays, an edit suite, open work area upstairs we'll show you. And then the back two thirds is full production, a giant wide open production space. So when we first looked at this building, we really saw the vision for doing a mezzanine style build like this. We, we looked at it, we saw that there was a lot of usable vertical space. So this was really kind of the vision from the beginning and it's been a long time getting here, but we're really excited to share it with you guys. Our last space, for those of you that have seen that video, uh, it was an awesome space. We had a great landlord, but it had its limitations. It was smaller than this, but it had 12 foot ceilings. It had uh, support beams and poles right in the middle of where we needed to shoot. And one of the biggest hindrances was the uh, 36 inch door. And so we couldn't bring anything really big in. We couldn't park our truck or trailer inside. This has a really big garage door and uh, we'll show you guys that in another video. We're gonna show you everything that we've done here. Let's take you first to the conference room. So this, we wanted a, a nice open lobby, kind of a, just a, I don't know, a loungy space right when you walk in. This is what we call the West Conference Room, kind of the bigger of the two conference rooms. Our team has our meetings in here. We uh, kind of have our Monday, Friday meetings, our all hands uh, every week. This is the new graphic that we made for the building or we had made for the building. With our old space, we were pretty limited on our conference table and uh, we definitely outgrew the capability and the size of that conference room. So this is really meant to accommodate, you know, 12 plus people. Now behind me right here is actually a hidden pocket, not a pocket door, but it's a hidden door to the editing suite area. We're not gonna show you that now. You can see how that works. That was a pretty exciting ad, but we're gonna get to that later. So we're gonna keep moving on with the tour and show you guys uh, what is the small conference room now, uh, kind of the alternative meeting space. So let's go check that out. All right, so back in the lobby, you can see kind of what is the front door right behind me over here. And then the hallway, kind of the main artery of the space here. This leads you to the small conference room, a couple of bathrooms, the stairs, which go upstairs, and then the editing suite. So in here is the small conference room. And this was just a place where, hey, if we're hopping on a call or um, just some small internal meetings, that was the designation of this space and uh, allows just a small meeting. That way you don't take up a huge room. We have a wonderful painting from Danny on our team. Uh, and this is actually made from uh, a piece of plywood from the old uh, psych wall of our old office. And it serves double purpose. Not only is it beautiful, it also covers up a gas line uh, that we do need access to. Moving on to the hallway that Keenan was talking about earlier, there is a few key features that I really wanna highlight. The first of all being this guy right here. This is the staircase. We had a contact that fabricated it all for us. We figured out the dimensions and kind of how uh, spaced everything needed to be. So we gave him those and then he fabricated it for us. And then we had someone at a wood mill, a good friend that was able to do all the treads with a white oak here. Uh, we finished these ourselves and then we assembled the staircase and installed it ourselves, which was uh, a bit of a learning process, but it was a good team building exercise. Now, moving on to over here, we have the bathrooms. Now, the actual size of these didn't change from the original bathrooms, but we did have to basically reconstruct them from the ground up. So they are completely different bathrooms from the tile to the walls, to the toilets and the vanities and everything, you name it, they are totally new and fresh. And then the other awesome feature is this water fountain here. This was something we had to have. And when I say we had to, we actually had to have according to the building permit. But I will say, I would do it again a thousand times over. It is one of the nicest things in this office to have is having a water bottle filling station like this. We use it all the time. Right behind Zach are the couple doors that lead to the studio. And that's gonna be another video, but stay tuned because that tour is gonna be awesome. 
down this hallway are the editing bays, the editing booths. And these are just an isolated room, kind of a solo person able to offload media or if you need to hammer out you know, eight hours of editing, you can go in there, not be bothered. They're uh, an awesome little space. The walls, although aesthetic, they also serve some sound purpose. They are uh, felt backed uh, wood slat panels. So they help absorb some of the sound isolation from the front to the back and, uh, and keep it controlled. Now the star of the show, the editing suite. This is something that we have always wanted was uh, a really controlled room that uh, had a couple editing desks, but also had a good viewing area where we could come see the finished product once we actually finished it. Yeah, so the uh, screen that you see here, we actually went with a short throw laser projector setup. We really wanted that 120 inch just because it is a pretty big wall here, obviously. So it's a lot of space to fill. So that's what we chose to go with. We've been really happy with that. And then just a, a pretty simple 5.1 sound system that has worked really great. And really the whole vision for this space, you know, we have the couches here was a space that we can gather as a team, that we can enjoy our final products, that we can potentially show clients. Um, and then also from time to time, also play some Super Smash Bros, which we all love and we uh, like to do every once in a while. Over in this corner is where that secret door I was referring to is. And you can see, uh, it's just a nice little quick way that you can get into that conference room, which is pretty sweet. Kind of a fun little feature of this space. Now, I'll hand it over to Keenan because in this corner, we actually have the sound booth. We even have a recording sign. Let's check it out. All right, so the sound recording booth here was built different than everywhere else in the space. This is kind of the center of the front third of the space so that it's away from all of the walls. The ground, the floor is actually on little rubber feet uh, so that it uh, we don't get any vibrations. All the walls have uh, some mass vinyl, a layer of sheetrock, then some green glue and another layer of sheetrock and then the felt. Uh, and then actually behind all of that is some, uh, some rubber pads to hold that all away so that we really get nice isolated sound. And the idea with this was let's have a big room, a, a wider room so that we could set up a camera and be able to film a podcast. Uh, and I actually reached out to Rode. I said, hey, Rode, would you guys be interested in decking out this podcasting room that we have? Uh, the sound recording room and they jumped on board right away they were like absolutely what do you guys want and they hooked it up so we got four pod mics we got four stands we got uh, four headphones uh, all the xlr cables that we needed uh, plus the roadcaster pro 2 and this thing is so easy to use really really user friendly we we feel confident that if we did rent this space anybody coming in could uh, figure this out, be able to use it in no time. We've been big road fans for a long time. We've used the road, uh, road go a bunch of the different road mics, big shout out to them. We love everything we have set up so far. Caleb, what I miss? That's it. That's everything in this space. It's pretty cool space. <laughs> Thanks for holding up the light. It's a very dark space. We have black felt in here and everything disappears. <laughs> so because we do have a little bit of length with this room, it's kind of a skinny long room. Uh, over here, we do kind of have the other audio equipment that we use. This sometimes can just be for voiceover stuff, um, but it's actually a nice little window right into, again, that projector, that viewing display, so that if we're doing things like ADR or voiceovers here in-house, um, you can actually see what you're doing. We don't have to have a separate display in here. So it's kind of a nice little feature, and I know that there's gonna be a lot of audio people that just wanna rip on our nice hard surface here, but go ahead. It's great for viewing. With uh, the rest of the space, as Keenan already talked about, we actually did finish it with this acoustic PET felt uh, that's on the ceilings, that's on the walls, uh, and then the bass traps as well. Uh, really, we found it to be a great acoustic solution just for dampening sound. A lot of these spaces are still kind of a work in progress. They're gonna continue to evolve over the years, but this is currently where they sit today. Let's go back this way and check out what's upstairs. Now, the other thing that we've done with this space and something we wanted to integrate uh, was having some smart integration throughout the entire office. Uh, this is to really help save us time to help integrate things that when people are leaving the office, all the lights can go off uh, to everything with security. So here you'll notice all of our switches, we went with an Innovalley switch. They really hooked us up, uh, gave us a sweet discount on all of these because we had to buy a lot of Innovalley switches for this. Uh, but this allows for smart integration of these lights. So again, we can control all this on our phones, whether it's Siri or Google Assistant, you have that functionality or Alexa to, you know, turn off all the lights immediately or turn them back on without having to run to switches as well. And these are the physical switches that all talk through that smart network. Uh, but that's kind of a fun thing we've added. So as you move through the space, you'll notice that 
uh, those are pretty prevalent kind of everywhere you can see there's one here we have a couple here again so you can not only control the overhead lights above but you can control those accent lights you can control modes and programs so that's what we've done with the edit suite actually is you know being able to bring the lights all the way up in brightness or dim them to the viewing mode so it's really customizable which is great uh, and allows a lot of flexibility moving into the future so let's go check up the upstairs there's a lot of really fun things to show you guys up there Okay, so making your way to the second level, as you can see, more Innovelli switches. This is integrated everywhere in this space. There is no switch or light or fan that it isn't integrated into. So uh, again, we love that really cool function to have all those features that we can do with these. But now this is the big open workspace up here. So uh, kind of on this side of the stairs, uh, just a bunch of desks and a big, uh, again, open workspace that uh, connects with the lobby. We have uh, big glass railing over here that allows a lot of natural light coming in. Plus with this truss right here, we're able to uh, hang up hammocks and be able to have a uh, after lunch uh, nap or after lunch snooze if, if you need it. You kind of see this truss is in a weird place, but we wanted the space underneath. It allowed us to make the editing suite and the sound booth and everything a little bit bigger. And we didn't need a lobby to be that big. And, uh, that was the great part about this space was having the 24 foot ceilings, being able to put some trusses and have a second level up here uh, in, a, in a big open workspace and really maximize the amount of square footage that we had in a building this size. Yeah, and the other thing to note too is this space that we had kind of envisioned really did have uh, tension rods running through it. There was a lot of engineering that we had to do with a structural engineer to basically come up with a plan of how can we get this so there's uninterrupted, you know, a 20 foot by 60 foot space up here. So that's where you kind of see things like the X braces in the corners of the building. So there's a lot of thought that went into making this happen. It wasn't just a simple solution, but moving on to this room right here. Now, this was one we originally weren't gonna do for one very obvious reason. We have a truss in the way. So. Uh, after we talked about it more and we talked to some builders, they made the comment that the city really wasn't gonna have a problem with it being a utility room. So we thought, why not put the furnace in there? We have a, a furnace, we need to put it somewhere uh, and it can be some kind of miscellaneous extra storage. And that's what we did. So we made a little extra room. It's not a room we go in all the time, but it's great for the extra space that we have. Now, it is a little bit messy in here. Uh, so you'll have to excuse us for that. But this is our storage room. Uh, the furnace room, obviously, this is where we keep all of our merchandise, uh, shirts, t-shirts, you name it, and really anything office supply related. Now behind me, you'll also notice we have another room in here. As you can see, we have some security on this. It's always good to have a little extra security measure uh, so that not any Joe Schmo can just walk in here and futz around with uh, really important data. The other thing you can see, we do have security cameras uh, sprinkled throughout the building. We have a lot of those, uh, all hardwired uh, using Ubiquiti. Uh, which we've really enjoyed so far. It's a really great option for security cameras. But I'm gonna punch in my code here and show you guys a peek at the server room. Now, this is the messiest room right now, currently. It is, it's a server room. So, you know, it's not gonna be pretty all the time. It needs to be functional. That's the most important thing. So, right here is, like I said, the heart of threefold. Uh, and what houses all of our data and our active projects. So this is the server, the data server. You can see we have a lot of different drives in there. Uh, we also do have a Blackmagic Cloud store um, that we've been working on getting set up, trying to work on what a remote type editing would look like and workflow would look like. So that's sitting up there as well. That's all tied into the network as well. So any of the computers, any of the desktops, uh, anything that's connected to 10, 10 gig or even one gig for that matter, all ties in right over there through our switches. So that is where everything ties into and then eventually gets tied into this. That way, wherever you are in the space, we have hard line connections to right up in here to give us super fast speeds to edit from. Now, the other thing in there you'll notice, uh, that is also where we have all of the lines coming in for our security cameras. So it's all the computers, but it's also all the security cameras as well. So the other thing with this room, it is a very small room, obviously, and we kind of did that um, intentionally because we have it on its own separate cooling system. Uh, you know, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward with just a air conditioning unit. Uh, but this way we can keep it a lot cooler. It helps with all the hardware, the spinning disks, the drives, all that stuff really 
does better if it stays a little bit cooler. And obviously servers and hardware like this generate a lot of heat. Now, probably looking at this, wondering what's going on. The great thing is we already had access to an outside vent from before for a separate heating unit. But what we did is we actually have a system here where during the winter, we can vent out this air conditioner into the rest of the space. That way we're not wasting that heat and just blowing it outside. Um, but in the summer, we can reroute it and shoot it outside. So that hot air from the air conditioner is actually going outside. So it's kind of a thing that we can do during the winter to uh, summer months, uh, just a way to conserve a little bit of extra energy so we're not being totally inefficient. So with that, I'll hand it back to Keenan. All right, so you'll notice right from the server room, we have the kitchen and a few familiar pieces of furniture, some chairs, the couch. We even have a couple phone booths that made their way over here. Uh, and right in front of the server room, we have a nice uh, award shelf that uh, you'll see. But this is the kitchenette. And uh, if, you know, small little kitchen space, a couple of uh, tables and a nice little area for uh, everybody to hang out and have lunch or have a coffee with the uh, espresso machine. Uh, Joel did the tile work uh, and we're able to get uh, some new cabinets in, countertop. Back here, because this building does curve, uh, back here we do have a little pocket door uh, because we had to build this wall out. We, had, we built this pocket door, a little secret door, another one. And uh, this is where all the uh, not good looking kitchen appliances go uh, when they're not in use. And this is, you know, these are kind of the deep dark secrets of this building. but. The, uh, it's great because it keeps all the ugly appliances in here, plus all the uh, stinky smells of uh, using those appliances and uh, a great little storage. Plus this little corner, we have a massage chair, massage chair and the hammock. This thing gets used a lot actually, um, kind of a, a really fun feature. Plus our little robot that cleans every day, uh, thanks to him. This area is just kind of a little lounge space. Um, and we'll eventually be, uh, we have a pinball machine that we're gonna be putting here uh, and just kind of a little gaming nook. This right underneath me is that conference room. And again, uh, the small conference room, we wanted to have uh, just a little extra space downstairs and it made sense to, to butt that out and, and use that space down there. And as Caleb was mentioning before, this is the X bracing that we had to put up in order to get rid of the tension rods that would be at you know chest level with the truss here. So um, we had to install these. We had to lift these up uh, with two scissor lifts. And uh, thankfully we knew somebody uh, that is very good at welding and he helped us weld them in place. And that was part of the structural engineering plan that we had to have for this space. So uh, we're gonna sit down with Caleb and uh, tell you a little bit more about the space and how we got here. All right, so that pretty much wraps up everything with the studio office, I guess the office tour not yeah. the not the studio tour that's coming that's coming soon yeah. and this has been a, a really big dream of ours this is something that we've wanted a space like this uh since we started threefold and we wanted a really big area where we had a big production space but we had a lot of storage where we could you know put all of our gear we could bring our trailer and our truck into and uh and it's Threefold is celebrating 10 years this year. So it, it hasn't come quickly. It, you know, it's taken time and this space took time. It's been two and a half years since we purchased this building until now. And we're, you know, we're finally being able to see what this space looks like fully done and fully complete. And uh, it, it's really exciting. Yeah, and when we got the space, again, we bought it and we knew the, the place was a total dump, uh, which is the only reason we really could even afford it um, and get into the space. We knew that we were in for a, a load of work, um, but it's been worth it. It's just been a huge process uh, to get where we are today. Um, but, you know, I'm grateful that we were able to do it and have the opportunity to do it, I guess, and, and juggle not only work, but being able to build out this space because we've really done a lot of the work um, ourselves with our team. And we would have never invested this amount of work and time and money and effort into a space that uh, we couldn't own. And that for us was the really big selling point was be able to own the space and have the security that, you know, we're not leasing this, but this is ours. Uh, and we can be in here for a really long time safely and feel secure that we're going to be able to be in here for a long time. So, yeah, and it, it gives us a lot of opportunities, especially where we're at. Having a studio like this, you know, we're able to build sets in the back that, uh, you know, we can have a better, you know, work life balance where at five o'clock, uh, you know, we can put everything on pause and go home and pick it up the next day. And if we were renting a space, 
uh, you know, we're really constrained to, you know, the mercy of we need to finish the project today because we don't want to rent the, you know, the studio for another day. And so uh, it gives us a lot of flexibility and also the ability to do work here in North Dakota and uh, do work for companies that are global, do work for companies anywhere in the U.S. And so they can send us their product or we can build the sets and we can do the creative. And uh, so it gives us a ton of freedom in the, in the work that we're able to do uh, you know, right in our backyard. If you haven't seen it yet, I really encourage you to check out some of the, uh, some of the warehouse series that we have. We've been documenting it. We're not totally caught up. This video is totally gonna leapfrog, you know, a, a year worth of uh, progress. Uh, but you can see how far we've come in some of those videos and uh, what a wreck this place was when we, when we first moved in and when we first got it. Yeah, and if there's things that you know we didn't touch on that you guys are curious about, leave them in the comments because we'd love to chat more and tell you guys more about it. And I'm sure this won't be the last of the studio tours. You know, like Keenan said, this has been a long, over two and a half year process for us, and we have it in a good spot now. But I know that we all kind of have ideas and plans to how this space can evolve and change and adapt uh, to our work and you know what we do. So I'm sure you know in a couple of years from now it might look slightly different. Um, so. Yeah, you know, there'll be more of this type of content coming out in the future. But again, if there's something that we didn't cover, leave it in the comments below. We'd love to talk about it, answer those questions. So there you go. This has been uh, the first part one uh, office studio tour uh, for the new threefold HQ. Uh, stay tuned for part two, the studio tour. And if you guys want more in depth videos on the sound booth or the editing suite and some of that stuff, uh, let us know. We're, we'd be happy to make those. If you like the video, subscribe. You're gonna and wanna like see it. the next one. It's gonna be just as good, hopefully. If you didn't like it, hit dislike. Yeah. D yeah, no, that just is true. comment dislike. Don't hit the... <laughs> yeah, give us a comment if you disliked it because that'll actually help with more traction. That'll, yeah, yeah. that'll help with views, so. Yeah. All right, bye. <laughs> Goodbye.